just doing a bit more with the shower unit. I've put the plug and waste in and I've got the two shower nozzles set up so you can switch between the handheld and the overhead. This is the flex tube I pulled off the back that I wasn't real happy with. But it, would, it might be alright because it's on the shower side but I don't want any leaks so I've replaced it with this braided PEX tube. And I've just run the hooked up these push-in PEX fittings and then run that down through the floor. That gives me some flexibility when I push the shower back into position. I've drilled the drain there. So there's the hole for the drain. That pipe's just running under there. You can see it through the hole there. It's just not connected to anything. I'm going to have to use that flex drain to get that you see where that hole's drilled there that was the center once it's pushed back into position the center of the drain and that's where I'm going to run the drain to to avoid that cross member which I marked on the floor I'm going to pick it up so I'll be using that flex drain because that's basically all there is available flexible drains and hopefully it'll be hopefully that'll do the job so I'm a lot happier using this braided line and I've connected that all up. So a few minor adjustments and we'll be able to push that back in position. As you can see we've got the shower unit installed now, all the glass doors in. I've just got that plumb through the floor just with the hot and cold and the drain just going through the floor and just taped off for the moment. That's basically all we've got done in the bathroom. I've just got a bit of timber here. I'm just looking at trimming the edges where the shower unit goes into the corners just to hold it in place. It is self-standing and self-supporting but I'll just pin it in place with some trim but make that removable in case I have to get behind in the future for any maintenance. Then I can just pull that unit out and fix up any problems if there is any in the future. Hopefully not. Also, we've been moving more furniture in. This is just stuff from our other place that we had in town, just here temporarily. We're wanting to move into the, this container here to get out of the heat, and it's getting a bit hot in the caravan. So, we want to set up some fans. So, we're going to increase our solar system, which we'll have a look at in a minute. We've got the most important member of the family taken care of there. So the cat. I'm just kidding. Now I've got the daughter's room all sorted and she's already started bringing in toys. And she's got lots of storage. She's looking forward to getting all that, her toys out. Just be like birthday or Christmas. Heaps of toys have been packed away in shipping containers. Also all these screen doors have replaced all these locks that I drilled out now so we can lock all the doors. Keep the place secure even though we had this savage guard dog. And chew my leg off. Oh yep, watch out. Another reason why we're moving all that furniture out of the containers is to give us some room to put all this stuff. If it was up to my wife she'd just throw it all but a boy's got to have his toys. Mm -hmm. Speaking of upgrading our solar system we're going to get a couple of deep cycle batteries and just in this corner here we've got two kilowatts of panels from our old place we had in town there I think they're 190 watts each 24 volt panels 12, 12 of them by memory we're going to use a couple of them in parallel out on our charging station out here so our main goal for the moment is just to set something up that we can run a couple of fans overnight just in the heat so that's our charging station, a couple of fans. The fans only draw around 40, 50 watts. And we'll get rid of this battery, which is pretty much on its way out. It's only a standard car type battery, low maintenance, and got a couple of proper deep cycle batteries and replace that so we can run some fans overnight. 
and I'll change the panel up on the roof there now. It's, I think it's a one, it's a 150 watt panel, 24 watt, uh, 24 volt. Sorry. I'll probably put a couple of those 190s in parallel up there, which hopefully should provide enough power just to run a couple of sort of desk mounted fans overnight. See, we've got a good charge there at the moment. Nice and bright sunny day. Just that this battery is not really holding charge. That is six year old and it's not, not a deep cycle battery. But it's done the job over the years as it was just the backup for the aquaponics system. Uh oh. <clears throat> See what else we've been up to out the back here. Now the chooks are in their pen up the back still. And we've started our flooring for the shed that we're putting here. So I built up all this pad, just leveled it off. I used the laser, laser level to make it fairly level. And I've started to put down this solid floor. It's 50 mil thick treated pine sleepers, three meters across, and they're 200 millimeters wide. So I've got sleepers underneath, and then they all screw screw to those sleepers, as can be seen there with heavy duty screws and then the shed will be built and bolted down onto this and that'll make a real nice solid floor. It's a six metre shed as I've said before but you can divide it in half so this end will probably be the garden shed so I can get some gear out of the bus and give a small room. Sort some more gear out up this end will probably be the power power room with the inverters and batteries once we get that set up. And this little section on the end, which is a bit longer, so that section there will be the six meters. I'll put a little pump shed on the end where all our tanks will connect to, and there'll be a 12 volt pressure pump. And the filters. We're actually going to run a separate power system. It's going to be a trial for a separate power system for the water. So it'll have its own 12 volt system on a separate panel. We're using a fairly high flow 12 volt pump at 60 psi. We'll see how that goes. If it doesn't work, well then we'll just switch that over to a 240 volt pump and connect into the main power supply for the house. But I thought I'd try a, a low voltage 12 volt system for now and see how it works. I started clearing more area up the back just to keep up keep a bit of a fire break. It doesn't look like much there now, but a few wood poles piling up. There's a lot of dead trees I've got to get rid of. We really don't want any bushfires coming through, so we've got to be prepared. Well, that's about it for today. We'll catch you again next time on the Bush Block Homestead.